Central Vice President Atiku Abubakar has cautioned the government against ignoring the growing calls for restructuring, saying that doing so could lead to the fulfillment of recent predictions that Nigeria could soon become a failed state. He said, and I quote, Nigeria has foundational issues which we have to resolve. Until we resolve those issues, our nation may not fulfill its potential of being the beacon of light for the black race, even if we have the most righteous people at the helm, end of quote. Now, I'm being joined to have this conversation by Dikbo Olayoko. He's a journalist and, of course, a legal practitioner, Ayo Ademi-Louis. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, All right. Uh, good evening, viewers. Good evening. All right. So I'm going to start with you, um, Mr. Dikpo, because you are a journalist and you've practiced for so many years. You've probably seen a lot more than we all have seen um, when it comes to the issue of Nigeria. There have been several renewed calls over and over again uh, for restructuring uh, in the country. Um, I mean, for example, Heading up to the 2015 elections, it became a word that people threw around, you know, politicians mostly. Um, but before then, we had the National Confab in 2014. Uh, that was under the Good Luck Jonathan administration, um, which was boycotted by the APC, by the way. Again, in 20, sometime in 2018, there was a report by the APC um, a committee that was set up to put together a report on restructuring. All of these things have been dumped somewhere and they're all stacking up dust. So really, what does restructuring mean when politicians throw it around? What exactly are they telling us? Yes, thank you very much. Um, restructuring to Nigerian politicians it's like a campaign slogan. Nigerian politicians use it as a means of attracting attention, especially when elections are coming. The shout about restructuring did not even start around that 2014. It started right from the military era. And some people used it as a campaign tool. You, you, you see, it is very, very unfortunate that uh, people in government, especially people in government, they seem to lose touch with the people they are governing. But the point and the reason is not perfect. I think the reason is even the people that are being governed, we don't know what we want. I remembered that there was a general, Chief Odisha Gumbasan, Joe Confab, even before the General Conference of 2014. This issue cropped up, and even before then. You see, but, but I think where the problem lies is, are we singing the same tune on the issue of restructuring? How do I mean? If you have 15 people in this room today talking about restructuring, you will have different 15 perspectives to restructuring. Mm. That is the irony of the situation. And we at least have a unified force that we can say, okay, this is exactly where we are going. And this is how to go about it. But like I said at the beginning, restructuring is like a campaign tool in the mouth of a Nigerian politician. Maybe before Mr. Yoade Miluye comes in, is it not an irony that an Atiku Abubakar, a vice president for eight years, never saw the reason for any instruction when they were in office. But because Nigeria, it has become the campaign slogan now, everybody is now joining the train, the structuring. Ask them what they mean by structuring, then you will be having different song from them. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Ayo, I'm going to come to you with this. Um, um, like, he, he's, he's already asked my second question, because there are people who um, say that politicians you know, throw around restructuring just because of what they want or what they're after. And then there are also people who say that restructuring means different things to different people. But for you as a Nigerian who has watched, you know, governments come and go, what does restructuring mean to you? And, and, and really, how and where do we start in restructuring Nigeria? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, in reality, I want to agree with the school of thought 
that uh, Nigerian politicians use the term restructuring for all kinds of purposes. And the Nigerian masses too must define exactly what kind of restructuring that they want. Uh, for instance, as far back as 1947, Shifa Olowo, during the 1947 Constitutional Conference, said Nigeria is just a mere geographical expression. And it was trying to refer to the uh, amalgamation that occurred in 1914, which was purely for British capitalist uh, interests. It will surprise everyone that as far back as that time, it was even the northern ruling elite that were complaining that they were the main stain of local economy in Nigeria. Just the same way that uh, elites are elite are complaining today. So you see also that we have a continuum. In 1922, you have the Willis Commission that took care uh, of minority agitations. So for the history of Nigeria, since 1914 to today, it has been a trajectory of sorrow, tears, and blood. Because the country in itself is merely a geographical conjugation for to act as the uh, some safe landing or for anglo saxon uh, interest. You discover that Nigeria is surrounded by many francophone countries. In fact, as far back as uh, uh, the 1950s, the what is called Nigeria now includes uh, southern Cameroon of today, mm. which is the only portion, apart from Ghana, that Britain, Great Britain, has. So we, we have found ourselves in a straight jacket, so to speak. So how do we get out of this uh, straight jacket? First of all, we need to realize that we have a national question that we have to resolve. There has never been any time when the nation states that make up Nigeria, the multi ethnic groups that make up Nigeria, democratically determined to be together. There must be a democratic uh, platform to decide whether we should be together or not. But that is that, but, but Ademi Louis, that's also that's a that's an issue that is very sensitive, especially to our okay. leaders, an issue that we barely ever want to talk about, and that's a whole discussion on its own. But but now that we're here, because I want to take you back to um, Atiku Abubakar's statement. He he did exactly. complain about the system of government that we um, you know are operating. He says that we're operating two different. Um, systems of government and 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 calling it a different name and he's saying that it doesn't work that we need to redefine what we need uh, or what system of government we have to run as a country only when we do that then we can decide to go forward as a country if not then we are going to end up as a failed state so we uh, are so go ahead basically basically my response to that is that the first and foremost uh, type of restructuring that we have to do is the restructuring of our economy. You find that according to the 98 percent of Nigeria's uh, manifold resources are in the hands of just one percent of the of the population, and these one percent uh, are the ruling elite. No matter their tribe, no matter their religion, they are united. Nigerian working masses also need to be united to have the enormous research society in their hands. I look at chapter two of the uh, Constitution of the Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as amended. It reflects the purpose, the fundamental basis of our coexistence, that the main business of government, of the state, shall be the promotion of the interests of the welfare of the people. We need a restructuring of our economy, that the commanders of the economy be put in the hands of those who are moving the machines in, the, in this country. Mm. In terms of education, that means that you need the energy of this country to be used for education, for health care, for every other necessary thing uh, that, we, or that, that every African Nigeria needs to do. And that's the kind of social that we are arguing for. Okay, it okay. It's economic discussion. Okay, let me come back to you, uh, Mr. Dipo. I want to go back okay. to the some of the recommendations in the Comfab under the Good Luck Johnson administration. I'll just quickly list a few of them. Um, 
the, they talked about scrapping of the 774 local government areas. They um, talked about the creation of 18 new states, um, the reduction of the share of national income um, going to the federal government and increasing the share that states are supposed to receive. Um, they talked about combining a presidential and a parliamentary system of government. I wonder how that's supposed to work. They also talked about power rotation at all levels. I mean, I could go on, but the question is, where is this report? And also under the um, APC restructuring um, report, there was an issue of state policing. Is there anything in all of these conferences that we could have taken to help restructure our country instead of just wasting monies and having people sit in rooms and monies exchange hands, and then at the end of the day, these things gather dust? Can we go back to look at some of the recommendations of these so-called confabs or national conferences or committees that have raised blueprints? Can we pick and choose some of the things that were resolved in those meetings to help us go forward? Yes, there is, a, there is an important aspect which we need to put forward, that many of these recommendations require what we call constitutional amendments. As we are today, Nigeria is operating under a constitution that is said to be the ground norm that guides all of the activities of both the government and those government. So many of these recommendations require constitutional amendments. That is why the President Mohamed Buhari set up a committee under the former Senate President, Chief Unamani. Ken, Ken, Chief Ken Namani, mm -hmm. to like get a look at all the recommendations of the past confabs, talk shows, or whatever it is. Because, like I said, there was the Chief Official Government of York National Conference, of, I think of 2005, if I'm not mistaken. They had their own recommendations. There have been other recommendations from ad hoc committees. Then we have the 2014 National Confab of Dr. Jonathan as the president. The president now mandated that group to collate all these recommendations and come up with a paper that will be presented to the National Assembly because these things require constitutional and constitutional amendments. Because some of these things go against the constitution we are practicing. Like, for example, the current constitution, the current constitution says we must practice presidential system of government. It says all police formation must be under the control of one IGP in Abuja. Mm. So if you are going to scrap all the 774 local government as we recommended in the, the, the confab, it requires that this matter will take, be taken to the national, to the national, national assembly. But the point is, they are very good recommendations. There, are no, there is no system of government that we practice. That is why I always make reference to this man. The, the man said that, I can't remember his name, he was a poet. He said, as to the forms of government, let the fools content. That which is best governed is the best. What I'm trying to say in essence is that no matter the level of amendment we are doing, no matter the degree of our restructuring, my dear sister, if we don't remind, if, if we don't restructure the minds of an average politician, we will be back to zero. So, so Mr. Deepo, make could, so Mr. Deepo you're Republic, saying that First Republic, so you're saying that the the, the the roadblock that we have now are our politicians. It's the political will to the, 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 have yeah, yeah. a constitutional one of, one of the conference. That we make for us to go back to the, the, the First Republic, Second Republic, we have to take into consideration the caliber of the people in government there. The right. mindset of an average Nigerian politician today is how do I further my nest? So, no matter the level of restructuring that you are making, we are not going to make any impact until we restructure the mind of Nigerian politicians. The All present right. Nigerian day, Nigerian politicians. All right, thank we you very much. We cannot compare them with the first generation of Nigerian politicians. So, I think that is where we need to start from. Whatever restructuring we are going to think of, as we are thinking of the structural restructuring, there is a need to look at the additional attitude of Nigerian politicians. 
Unfortunately, unfortunately, gentlemen, we're out of time. I would have wanted to ask, you know, what we need to do, because in, in all of this conversation, we keep talking about the politicians. Where does the Nigerian who is being governed comes in? But we will have this conversation some other time. We continuously will be talking about restructuring. Uh, I want to thank you very much. Aya Demilui is a legal practitioner. And of course, Dikbo uh, is a journalist. Thank you so much, gentlemen. This is where we wrap things up. Uh, thank you for being part of the conversation. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back before then, we'll see what Nigerians have to say about Mr. President's um, decision to replace service chiefs. And when I come back, I'll give you my take. We have been expecting this sack for a very long time because the the service chief they are not they are not doing what Nigeria expected of them. So sacking them, I think, is is what Nigeria has been expecting. It's a good job. It's a nice one. Yeah, that's a good decision because they are overdue by right. And secondly, we have younger officers that want to prove themselves, but the time the opportunity has not been given to them. So I think that decision is a is a very welcome idea. It's the right move and it's well overdue. To me, it's a very, very good thing because these elderly people that they are there, they are not capable of taking care of this country. Let the young, young boys that are coming up, let them take over and make a change in this country. Those service chiefs, they have been there for, if not mistaken, I think for some, for some years now. And it is very good if they give chance for a new, a fresh idea. Because uh, look at the situation of Nigeria now, you, see, you, you can see insecurity everywhere. And uh, those new service chiefs, they, those service chiefs, they have been there. They, can, they have nothing to, to offer from the, point of, from the point of view. Because you can see killing in the north, killing in everywhere there are killings. So if they can bring new people that can serve with new ideas, fresh ideas that can help Nigeria to secure the, the, lives, and, the, the lives and properties of Nigerians, it's a, it's a very good move. I think um, I welcome the idea. It's time for my take. Well, finally, Mr. President has decided to do a 360 and send off his old service chiefs and immediately replace them with new guys. But there are question marks on some of these newly hired service chiefs. Can they perform? Will this be the beginning of the end of insecurity in Nigeria? Will this bring some respite in some of the troubled regions of the country? And beyond this, will Mr. President address other underlying issues along ethnic and religious lines and bring the needed unity to give us some sanity in the nation? Well, we're watching and we're waiting, Mr. President. And on that note, thank you all for being part of Plus Politics. I am Mariana Kondu. Have a great evening.